a really, really, really good talk. Um, and it's called, um, Plastic Isn't That Fantastic? And the only hint I'm going to give is this table, rather interesting, really gets you thinking. Okay, you'll see in a minute. Anyway, um, I think without any further ado, we're going to... Where is Bobby, actually? Uh, ah, Bobby. <laughs> give them hell. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Can you imagine a world without plastic? Yeah. Now, I cannot simply because of two reasons. First of all, I cannot because the plastic industry took over the steel industry in, in 1976. And second of all, I'm a visual learner. I like to touch things, move things around so that I understand. Huh? <laughs> I'm a laptop. <laughs> These are the three most commonly used things in my room, in my boarding house room. My printer, my lamp, and obviously my laptop. Now imagine that things with plastic suddenly disappear. Okay, so let's start... Oops, George. Let's start off <laughs> with the lamp. Okay, so we've got the lamp. Case made out of plastic. Sorry, can't use that. Printer, it's case also made out of plastic. Can't use it either. Laptop. It, hurt. it really hurts. But even the circuits are made out of plastic. Can't use it either. I mean, that seriously, that sucks for me. So we see that a world without plastic isn't that fantastic as well. Now, why is that? Now, plastic is categorized in seven main groups. The thing with this, or better said, the thing with plastic is that once you have plastic in one of these seven main groups, you can have almost limitless subcategories, allowing you a really wide range of plastic. Now, you might say, oh, well, well, that's good. The more you have, the better it is. But it's not. It's not when it comes down to this. A soap dispenser. Well, actually, recycling. Now, I don't produce soap dispensers, so I don't know how much plastic there is exactly, but I can tell you one thing. It's definitely more than those two types that I've listed there. And the thing with recycling plastic and having so many different types of plastic is that every single type of plastic needs to be recycled in a different way. Meaning that to melt down this soap dispenser and completely recycle it, we are wasting so much energy that we could... Uh, power up a light bulb for six hours in a world that lacks in many places any way of energy. Okay, so we don't want to dump plastic in our landfills to, landfills to fill up our beautiful landscapes. We also don't want to recycle plastic because it just takes too much energy. So what do we do with it? Well, sim uh, the answer is very simple. Well, Earth consists of up to 74% of water. So let's just dump it there. I mean, who on earth is going to swim 70 kilometers offshore? No one's going to ever realize that we've got plastic swimming in the oceans. No, so that's what we've been doing for dozens of dozens of years. And there is the problem now. The UN trots along at some stage and finds out that there are 46,000 bits of plastic per square kilometer in the ocean. Now these vary from sizes small as Tic Tacs up to as big as this room because, well, ship, you know, ships tend to sink. <laughs> now, <laughs> here's the question for you. What size do you think kills us? The small ones or the big ones? Who's for the big ones? One, two... Okay, well, it seems like more than enough are convinced that the small ones kill. And they actually do. It's the resin pellets. Now, what are resin pellets? These are really, really tiny things. And they are the fundament of every single plastic object. So, let me switch to the next diagram, diagram and explain you why they kill us and what we use them for. So, resin pellets sometimes manage to escape their natural production cycle before they get molten into various objects, such as a printer or a laptop. So they manage to escape. Beautiful red, isn't it? And as we've seen, things 
and tend to end up in the oceans. So on their way to the ocean, they take up chemicals, toxics, and oils. Very poisonous stuff that we also don't want to have on Earth, but we don't mind if it's in the oceans. So we wait until the resin... Well, we don't wait. We are very busy people. But the resin, <laughs> resin pellets, they just float in the ocean and get mistaken by fish eggs. So small fish eat these pellets. So all the toxics and all this waste is suddenly in the fish. So it's poison. But because small fish get eaten by big fish, they also get poisoned. But big isn't enough for us humans to be eaten. So we wait until the even bigger fish eats the big fish. So now three types of fish are poisoned. And at the end, we are poisoned as well, because we eat this fish. So we technically don't dump the waste into the oceans, but we dump it into ourselves. And this can, this can cause hyperaggression, hyperactivity, learning disabilities, it can lower the sperm production, and even cause prostate cancer. It's really not good stuff. <laughs> so, what would be, I mean, for people that still cannot imagine what massive problem the plastic causes, I have prepared a short video, well, I actually stumbled across this short video, and I don't take any credit for it, but I'd like to share it with you, because I find that, well, funny and serious on the other side. We didn't know, didn't even see the tide change But it's a small, small world, girl Getting even smaller every day I bet you think we didn't know Didn't even see the tide change Washes up to shore, even in this landlocked place. It gets thicker, it's toxic, get it out of my face. The trash washes up to shore, even in this landlocked already hinted kind of ish on a solution. A solution to use less plastic. Now we've also seen that plastic bags are the most commonly used plastic objects in the world. Now communities, individuals and societies have came up, have came up with the idea to just simply ban plastic bags. But it turns out that as time went on, the plastic industry became a very powerful organization almost. It ended up forcing the governments of the countries to define a plastic bag. Well, under the pressure, the government had to decide that everything with handles is a plastic bag. Therefore, it is a no-go. Everything without handbags, uh, handles, I'm sorry, on the right, is not a plastic bag and therefore it can be still used. So even the most simple solution to eradicate plastic doesn't work. Now here's my solution. I want you to be creative. By creative I don't mean to go outside on the street and shout use less plastic. I want you not to recycle plastic but reuse it in ways no one would have ever imagined it would be possible. An image I stumbled across in the internet again. And it's a street lamp covered in plastic bottles. So we see it's A, more creative, B, makes the streets more bright, and C, we automatically lower the demand for plastic. 
Thank you for your attention.